Hi all, my name is Carrie and I'm the education coordinator for Tumble Track. And although it would, it would be so much more fun if we were together, I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to share in this conference experience with you, at least, at least in some way, and that we get the chance to connect. Um, over the years, Tumble Track has had a lot of fun sharing ideas with the Star Institute, and this year is no exception. We are so excited for you to see what we've put together. Some of my favorite things about my job are, one, how incredibly proud I am of the products that we put out and how exciting it is to see kids and professionals using them in their practices every day. Then this, another great thing about my job is that I get to connect with those professionals and really be a, a learner and absorb everything that they do in their practice every day. So with that, I am so pleased to introduce you to Sherry Ireland Burke, who has over the course of the last couple of months and years, she has just wowed me with the magic that she creates in her clinic. Um, I'd like to give Sherry the opportunity to tell you a little bit about herself. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. This is my first experience with the STAR Institute, but definitely not my first experience in the pediatric therapy world. I have been a therapist for almost 32 years, maybe, since the late 80s, and I had a unique opportunity a few years ago to open a clinic in a brand new building with a bunch of brand new equipment, and I was allowed to order the equipment and figure out what we needed, and so uh, one of our therapists was a gymnast and she really, really wanted a trampoline. And so when I went on the website and started looking for the trampolines, I started seeing little bits and pieces of other equipment and I got really excited, but it was completely overwhelming for me. We needed mats, we needed um, different kinds of bolsters and things like that. And I wasn't really sure what I needed. So I called the company, I started talking with the representative there and we just she was so helpful. We just kept coming up with all these ideas and things. I started with a couple pieces. We expanded over time. We added some things. We put some things together. And I have just become in love with all of this. So I wanted to take an opportunity to kind of talk about how I use the equipment and how I use these different various pieces with the kids that I see in my clinic. So it has been so helpful working with Sherry in the last um, few weeks on this video project. I have learned so much. She's taught me so much about even our own equipment and how it can be used in, in therapy clinics. And so Sherry, what do you expect or hope that people watching this video will learn? Well, I, um, I definitely have gotten so many ideas from working with other therapists. And in the past 10, 15, or 20 years when I've been in a clinic with other therapists, the occupational therapists that I've worked with have taught me so much about how to work with some of our kiddos with sensory processing disorders and who are sensitive to all of the things that happen in our clinic. So I'm hoping that when our therapists watch this, or even our parents who can can take some of these things home. They will have an opportunity to bring something quickly home and use it immediately so that when you watch some of these ideas, you'll see in my children some things in your children that you're working on and you can quickly go home and start right away working and making progress and using some of the things that, that you've learned here. So before we get started on the heart of the video and all of the great content that Sherry has provided, I wanted to share with you that TumbleTrack has a couple of great opportunities as well, promotions that we are running just for this Star, this Star Institute conference. Um, we have two specials that we are going to include in the video and let you know are happening. One is a 20% discount on the Boundex. The Boundex is always a favorite when we bring it to shows and conferences, and also a 15% discount on all tumble track products that you're going to view in this video so those promo codes will be listed throughout the video for you to uh, reference and if you have any questions at all sherry and i are both available the sales team at tumble track is also available and all that content information will be available in this video
The Star Institute Symposium this year was titled Beyond the Surface. And that just made me think, wow, the surfaces that we use when we do our therapy are critical. Uh, we really are providing the foundation that these kiddos will grow and move and get stronger and be more, be more productive and be more incorporated into their world. So we thought, we would talk about our surfaces and the surfaces that we use to treat on. And we're calling this a surface with a purpose because I really believe that the surfaces we choose and the equipment that we choose and the setups that we choose and the way we design our therapy sessions really does have such a big purpose for our kids. Sherry, it is so, like, it makes me tingly hearing you talk about a surface with a purpose in that way because our you know at tumble track we work tirelessly at really just putting so much thought into um, whether our equipment is going to be soft enough bouncy enough versatile enough cleanable uh, uh, storable whether it's going to suit all the purposes that our users need we really, really, really deeply care about it. And so when I hear you talk about how our equipment um, is working for you and could work for other people, it, it, just, it just brings everything full circle for me as you know, in the work that I do. So thank you for sharing that. And I hope for all of you, you glean something from this video and are able to take away um, some, some of the great experience that Sherry has. So enjoy. We start developing our postural control as infants when we are just dealing with the whole idea of gravity in our life. And if we have anything going on that even brings us out of our midline or gives us some asymmetries, it could just be a little flat spot on one side of the head, we're going to really throw off our postural system. So let's talk about this little guy. This little guy has just a simple herbs palsy, a paralysis of the left arm, or a paresis, I should say, of the left arm. And so that kind of throws his entire postural system over to one side. He can sit up as long as he can prop up on one hand, but he really can't bring himself into midline. So everything that he does is, is just off a little bit. So when we put him in a seated posture, um, it's going to be really hard for him to maintain that midline and he's going to fall over to one side and we have to figure out a way to get his core more engaged. We have to take some of that stress off of that left side and get that core more engaged so that he can be better in an anti-gravity position. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that by putting something under him to get his bottom up higher than his feet. And this little incline here, this is a folding incline that I use for many things, but this is just the foundation right here. We're just gonna sit him up. We're gonna get his bottom up higher than his feet. We're going to let him play. Immediately, you can see that his spine is in alignment. It's extended. His arms come up off the surface. He's moving his legs freely um, and he's able to interact. And you can even see that immediately that left hand starts working. Just by putting a wedge under him, I've engaged his core he's pushing down on his feet so he doesn't fall forward and he is using his body in a whole new way and I'm there just to give him just a little tiny bit of stability and support but he's doing most of the work himself so this little guy is all too familiar he is an independent sitter he can sit all by himself but his posture in sitting it doesn't look so good he's propping on his arms he's folding his head back to kind of counterbalance and keep him up. And he's pretty much just hanging out there without being able to move very much. He's going to have a tough time playing. He's not going to make good sounds when he talks. He is not going to be engaged. I need to give him a good surface to sit on, get his bottom up higher than his feet, and really engage his core. And I'm going to do that really quite simply by putting him on a wedge. So it's super simple. I just put him on a surface that is going to just quickly bring his bottom up higher than his feet. And I'm going to put him on a, a surface that slants forward and it is going to very quickly 
help him engage his core. It's going to elongate his spine. Look at his little head. It's in perfect alignment now. And he's ready. He's ready to play. He's ready to make sounds. He's ready to talk. I've uh, put an elevated surface in front of him by just stacking a couple boxes that were in the room up in front of him. And now this little guy is ready to move and ready to shake. It's really very simple. And I didn't do anything other than put him on this little folded incline. So you can see he can reach up. He still has some imbalances. He still has some weaknesses, but you can see him engaging that core. He's able to rotate. He's able to rotate over and, and lift that hand up. So this particular incline or wedge or ramp is actually called the folding mini ramp. It is smaller than the other folding inclines that I have in my clinic but it is the perfect size to throw in the back of my car and to show a parent how simple it is to engage their child's core. And it's almost like a little miracle <laughs> because you really can quickly put a child in a better position and engage them and get their endurance, increase their endurance and their self-esteem because all of a sudden they didn't know that they could do all these things. And you, all you're doing is putting their bottom up a little bit higher than their feet and you have uh, a little miracle. So it's something that I often will bring into the home just to show parents what's possible. So this little friend of mine has some pretty significant muscle weakness. He is getting stronger every day, but weight bearing for him is often a struggle. And so I really want to work on developing his triceps and his shoulder muscles and, and opening up his chest wall and giving him some uh, breathing, some breathing activities. And this is a really great place to stabilize him on this wedge a little bit easier than on the floor. So I'm just going to have him sit with his uh, shoulders externally rotated or turned around so that you can see his hands over that back there. And I'm going to just start working with him in that position. And I can have him kicking a ball up and down the ramp. I can have him uh, making really loud noises to try to increase his respiration and his uh, abdominal pressure. And I can just put him in that position and do a whole bunch of things with him. And, and it's just a little bit easier for him than sitting on a flat floor. I can then progress him to kneeling and to reaching up overhead and I can work in tall kneel and I can transition from short kneel to tall kneel and when you put gravity in there by putting him downhill, it's going to kind of just cue those muscles to come in and then when he gets stronger, like you can see in the third picture, he can start reaching overhead and playing with a balloon or batting a balloon back and forth or catching and throwing a ball and I have him engaged, his glutes, his abs, his postural muscles, just by putting them on an incline. So then I'm going to get my friend in standing and we're going to work on activating his gastroc muscles, his quadricep muscles, his gluteal muscles, his abdominal muscles, all those leg and core muscles that he is not using when he's standing flat on the ground because when he's on the ground, he's locking his knees back into a very extended posture. He's locking his hips and his arms are down and he is not using those muscles. But now by just putting that incline under him, we are engaging those postural muscles and we can play a balloon toss game or we can have a catch or we can work on beanbag throwing in a ro with ro trunk rotation. And we are engaging all those muscles and I'm bringing that floor up to his heels and loading them. So I also wanted to add that even though this is not true of this particular little man, I see a whole lot of toe walkers in my practice. And my friends who walk up on their forefoot or their toes in that Aquinas pattern, that's a, another name for toe walking, is they are not loading their heels. They are not getting any weight bearing through their heels and so they don't have any callus on those heels. They have those tender little heels. And so by putting them on this wedge, I'm again bringing the floor up to their heels. I'm loading their heels and I'm giving them that sensory input. And I'm desensitizing whatever whatever sensor, part of their sensory system does not like their heels down. Um, and this is a great place to work on pretty much any anything you want to work on while the ground has been brought up to their heels. So again, I can just put a kiddo on an incline mat. This is the folding incline 
cheese mat or the folding incline mat. I can put them on it. The surface is firm. We can do what we have to do in therapy while we're on it and look at that posture. So here you have it. This is a little guy who doesn't sit independently. I put him on this incline, folding incline mat, and he is able to sit up. Look at that beautiful spinal extension. His head is up. He's playing with his dad. He's putting cars down the ramp and he's engaged. And that is a beautiful thing. So this little one is working with the speech therapist. We've just put an abdominal binder or a hero hug on her, and she is sitting at the top of the wedge. The speech therapist is sitting at the bottom of the wedge, conducting her entire therapy session. This is a little girl who absolutely cannot sit independently by herself, but when you put her on a wedge and you give her a nice surface to push off of, look at all the work she's doing. Look at all the great things that are happening. gotta get it those were her edges last like last week she would have fallen every time this week she's not falling at all and get that hand that this hand is usually flipped this way just tell her to fix her hand and she can do is this do you want a different sticker sheet do you not like this one so this is not far from independent sitting mm -hmm. so we just need to get her a nice wedge at school to sit on so this is my same friend at home, um, and she is sitting on an incline in front of a dollhouse that she got for a, a gift, and she would not otherwise be able to play with this dollhouse, but because we have her on the incline mat in front of the dollhouse, she's able to move from the first floor to the second floor of the dollhouse, and she can play almost independently. So now we have our friend sitting on the bottom of the incline mat and she is, look at that beautiful spinal elongation. She can push off the wall with her feet if she wants to. She's working on some fine motor skills. We can put a sheet of paper on the wall and have her work on her vertical writing skills just by putting her on the bottom of this incline. So I have hundreds of uses for the folding incline cheese mat, but I would not be true to form as a pediatric physical therapist if I did not show just one video of a child prone on elbows on the incline mat. So I have put one of the half rounds underneath her elbows so that she can get a nice firm surface to push through her elbows in prone and off she goes. Another piece of equipment that I truly love for working on posture and postural control is the air barrel. This is the smallest that you see pictured here is the smallest air barrel. And I have it actually propped with uh, the tumble track cradles that go underneath and Velcro underneath to keep it stable. It still rocks just a tiny little bit and moves anterior, posterior, backward and forward. But I can work on supine to sit in here and work on sit-ups and modified sit-ups. And I can move those little cradles a little bit further apart and have it rock side to side. And I can wedge a wedge under the back of it to just elevate a little bit, or I can pull down on that handle and elevate it myself. But you can see here that this little girl is working on her um, inner thigh strength, her spinal elongation, her core activation. She's able to reach overhead. And we can play face to face at eye level, working on all of these things at the same time. The thing I really love about the air barrel is that I can get on the piece of equipment right with the child. So here you see someone sitting behind this child just ready in case she moves outside of her center of gravity and doesn't have enough strength to maintain it. So we can work on trunk rotation, we can work on reaching, we can work on um, core stability and core activation and this is just uh, the air barrel with a couple fun sticks and some rings and you have a whole big activity. So you can turn the air barrel the other way horizontally and put the little one on their belly. And here she is just reaching forward with some prone extension against gravity over the air barrel to put a ring over the fun stick. Um, but I truly just added this picture because the cute factor here is off the charts. 
Oh my goodness, the fitness wheel, the fitness wheel, the fitness wheel. Every kiddo that walks into the clinic makes a beeline for the fitness wheel. It is colorful and it catches their attention and they want to know how it works. And the cool thing about the fitness wheel is that you can use it as a swing. It can hang sideways as a swing. You can flip it upside down and use it as a trampoline, like a little mini trampoline. But here we're using it to work on core stability, postural control for this little guy to engage all of his muscles at the same time. So watch. Probably the most important life skill that we can teach our children is self-regulation. This is a skill that's probably the most important thing to teach. And it's really a set of skills, like a whole host of skills, that is about controlling our behavior, our impulses, our thoughts, our movements, or our feelings. It's really about executive functioning, which is a control in the brain. It's about emotional regulation, which is control of our feelings, as well as our behavioral regulation, or control of our actions and movements. All of these, all put together, make up this set of abilities called self-regulation skills. Whenever you're dealing with any child, any kiddo in pediatric therapy, you got to talk about regulation or self-regulation. And that is a child's ability to control their actions and their feelings, their thoughts in any environment. And even though infants are born with some form of regulation, when they get like in the fetal position or when they try to suck their thumb, as they get older, um, they have to find ways to regulate themselves. And so one of the things that we really work on is just having some outlets for self-regulation. Now, I'm a pediatric physical therapist, and I can't imagine practicing in this day and age with all that we know um, and all that my fabulous uh, fellow OTs have taught me about regulation. So I want some heavy work. I want some some pushing, some pulling, some twisting, some yanking. I want to incorporate that into my session because then when they get to the hard stuff and the things that frustrate them and the things that set off their sensory system, we can come up with some strategies for regulation. Two, you're so strong. Okay, try that again. It might be moving a little bit too far away. Hold on. Ready? Four, this one's going to be big. So when he used to do this, his feet used to flip up over his head and he couldn't lift his legs up against gravity. And now he's so, he's so strong, he can do it with no problem. <laughs> That's okay. Climbing is one of those activities that's just intrinsically motivating. And when kids walk into the room and they see a climbing wall, um, you cannot stop them from jumping on it and climbing up. And the climbing wall at Tumble Track that we use, this is just basically an overlay that goes on a piece of equipment called the Power Launch. And so I can just lean this up against the wall and this little one can just This is actually the right size for a two-year-old. She can climb up safely. It's not too high. You can be right there with her. And she is getting such good proprioceptive input. And she's achieving something. Sometimes we'll put things at the top that they can retrieve. But this is just a really quick way to put up a climbing wall on a piece of equipment that can be moved around really easily. So it often drives everybody crazy when kids want to jump on the furniture and jump on the beds at home. But the truth is, children really need this sensory input um, for regulation. They are naturally searching out the benefits of jumping. Jumping provides vestibular and proprioceptive input. It supports the attention to task, and it also promotes calmness, organization, and of course, self-regulation. So what happens when your little ones are either not strong enough or too little to jump yet and you really want to get a lot of that pre-jumping, proprioceptive, intrinsic muscle building good stuff under their feet? The tumble track, original tumble track uh, jumping system is really a great place for them to start practicing those things. So I will put a little one on this just to work on their walking skills, their balance skills. But for self-regulation, they can fall and get up and crash and get up and, and nobody's really hurt. So not everyone has room for the big tumble track system in their clinic or in their home. 
but there is the power launch, which is a small air filled tumbling track that you can just put this overlay on or jump on it by itself. But here it has an overlay on it with a Velcro sticking piece. We've taken a couple of the fun sticks and we've lined them up and we've created a little jumping obstacle course for my little friend here to get her jump on. Sometimes self-regulation and cleanup can go hand in hand. So here we're just taking this versatile, fun, easy to move around equipment and putting it away. And this little girl's getting self-regulated all at the same time. Timing and sequencing and coordination or that rhythm that goes with motor planning is is just central to human activity. When we coordinate our movements, the ones that we need to walk or to form a sentence or to hold a pen and write, and the planning and the sequencing that goes into that are critical to efficient human function and to just everything we do. So we work a lot on breaking down the steps and the sequencing and the timing of that and the rhythm of that in pediatric physical therapy. So I can't think of anything more basic for timing, sequencing, and coordination than a hopscotch board. And we don't see them as much in the playground as we used to. But the thing I really like about the one that Tumble Track makes is because you don't have to keep recreating it. You can fold up this mat and slide it under a bench or slide it into a closet, or you can open it up and you have this great hopscotch that's standard. It's measurable. It is always the same. The surface is just firm enough that the child gets good proprioceptive feedback, but it's also compliant enough that they get a little bounce from it. And so I have kids that it's very rewarding to work on this. And there's a visual motor component to it for visual motor processing as they're jumping along and figuring out where their feet are supposed to be. There's bilateral control here. There is jumping, there is strengthening. I could go on all day about this. And I have kids that will just work on this over and over again. And it's really easy for me to just pop this out at the end of the session when I'm talking to a parent and they can kind of figure out what to do on their own or they can make up their own game, but they're still getting work while I'm having a conversation with mom. This is just a really super simple thing that I like to do with some of my kiddos that toe walk. I will have them put their feet flat on the tumble track sliders and they'll just straddle along and move along the fun sticks or sometimes I'll even use the half rounds and just have them move forward in a nice slow progression, slow down that forward momentum, get their heels back and activate their quads, their glutes, their abs and their postural muscles. This is a great activity that I really do a lot. Okay, go ahead. Fish foot, straddle. Okay, come on back with the elephant. And we'll put it in the puzzle. Oh, the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Fish foot. Oh, no, fish foot. Let me see. Let me see you do fish foot. Over. Fish foot over. Fish foot over. Oh, no, all the way. Yes, good job. The air barrel can become a dynamic coordination machine where I can work with a child on lateral movements and uh, push-offs and all kinds of uh, trunk, core, pelvic, strengthening and stability. And it's fun and it's dynamic and it's easy to use. The laser beam is just this seven inch wide balance beam that you can put on the floor, you can put on an angle, you can suspend across two equally high things to get an elevated beam. And it's really just a nice firm balance beam that has like these clearly marked lines and numbers that give your child visuals and give them something to um, focus on that they can watch and, and climb. And it's just a really great versatile piece of equipment that I find is great for balance and coordination. 
You also can't talk about timing, sequencing, and coordination without talking about stair climbing, going up and down stairs, which is something that we are expected to do in the community all the time. And it's one of the best places that I can think of to work on strengthening. And when you can make it fun and you have a nice compliant surface that is fun to climb and fun to jump off, then you have a bonus training tool. And coordination doesn't always have to be a big thing. Sometimes just coordinating your intrinsic hand and foot movements is a big deal for some of our kids. And so we have found ways to use different pieces of equipment um, for those things as well. The air pit, which is a big kind of, I call it the chip and dip container because it, it has like little square holes in it. But you can also flip it upside down and there's a lot of Velcro on it that keeps it stable on the ground. I use the Velcro for little pieces of things so that I can work on fine motor coordination in conjunction with some of my bigger coordination movements. The primary sensory systems that actually support motor performance are the proprioceptive system, the visual system, and the vestibular system. So the proprioceptive system would be the perception or the awareness of the child's position or the body movement. So this is what tells them where they are in space. This is what tells them where their joints are. It tells them how much muscle they need in order to stay stable or to keep their balance or to move against gravity. The vestibular system is more of the part of the, the sensory system that tells them when they're upright or when they're off balance. It's a really big component of the balance system, although all three of these are. And so when we talk about the vestibular system, this is the sensory system that is responsible for providing our brain with information about motion, about our position of our head, or about our orientation in space. It's also involved with the motor functions that allow us to keep our balance and to stabilize our body during movement and maintain our posture. So when we're talking about the visual system in conjunction with these others, we aren't just talking about how the child sees and how well they do in like a standard eye test, but we're also talking about their ability to use their vision in a learning and a movement environment. And so we sometimes will incorporate a lot of visual motor activities in our play and in our treatment. And so we're gonna talk about all of those right now. So in this activity, I'm just using the basic laser beam balance beam that's on the floor and it has lines and it gives a nice midline for this child to track from side to side. So we're working on strengthening, we're working on balance, we're working on his vestibular and proprioceptive system by having him tap on these things side to side. But we're also working on his visual motor system to allow him to scan from side to side so that he can keep track of where he is in space. This used to be so hard for you. I think I have a video of you doing this. Okay, this time I want you to step up with your right foot again. Nose over toes. <laughs> That's the first time you've ever done that. That was a four inch or five inch step. Okay, now you can't touch the wall when you get there. So this little guy is a toe walker and he is definitely a toe walker because of some sensory issues. So it's become an orthopedic problem, but initially it was a sensory issue and he has some visual motor concerns. He needs a lot of proprioceptive input and these are just the half rounds flipped upside down. They have a really stiff loop Velcro on the bottom that gives them a lot of tactile input, but they are moving and there is there are all kinds of components of that 
uh, vestibular, proprioceptive, and visual system that he is utilizing to navigate this. And for our really little ones who are just getting their first experience with their vestibular, proprioceptive, and visual system, I really love using the tumble track as a place to get all of that feedback and input in a safe environment where they can work on their transitions in and out of standing, in and out of sitting. They can fall all they want and not get hurt. And I I just can't say enough about the surface that the the tumble track original system has because they are using all of those little intrinsic muscles and I will often use the tumble track system just to really get feedback. So when you're working with the vestibular system you can use a lot of different motions to excite or to Uh, calm your vestibular system. And so you can use linear movements, which are calming, or rotatory movements and spinning, which are stimulating. And you can get all of that in this little uh, bubble bowl. It's so cute. And it's got a lot of textures on it. So you can get tactile and proprioceptive input as well. But you can really work on all those things right with this little bowl. One of the most challenging things that I have found as a therapist to work on is crawling or creeping. It is a skill that we all know is critically important for development. And we are big proponents of creeping and crawling, but it's really kind of a challenge sometimes to work with kids on the floor when you're above them and looking down. So I have found that using the air pit is a really great place to get kids on all fours in a quadruped or four point or crawling position. And I will sometimes have other kids just jumping out of the little holes. It keeps their head up or maybe I'll have them toss balls in these, but I'm having them crawl or creep around the sides. And I am in a position where I can manage their limbs and their positioning while they're crawling. So have a look. Push you back down again. Ready? We're gonna push you back down. Boop, 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 boop. Hello. <laughs> Never wait there on this hand before. Ready? Okay. Pop up. Pop up. Boop, 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 boop. So here we see our friend who's a toe walker again, and I'm just having him walk on the tumble track system, not jumping, just walking, getting good heel strike. He's getting great proprioceptive input. He's getting a lot of really good input into his feet with this really nice, deep, compliant surface. 